Welcome to the Tag Sunday message. We'll play a game together today and someone will win a prize. Then we'll have a message about unbelief. Before we get started, please get your Bibles out and if you would, turn to Mark chapter 9. Or even better would be to go click the link in the description of this YouTube video to go to a YouVersion Bible event page that has all the Bible verses and other information. That way, when we get to the lesson, you'll all be ready to follow along. And, you know, there's other parts of the message that will also be uh, on that YouVersion page. So I'm going to share my uh, screen, and we're going to play a screen game first. All right. We're going to play... A, basically, it's a Family Feud Bible Edition. So here's what we're going to do. One second here, turn this off. And you should be able to see in there the instructions as we have been doing, you know, to get started. Well, first, I just want to say, you know, you can play this any time of the day, Sunday or Monday, right? Uh, Tuesday, I tabulate the results to determine the winner. So if you're just watching this later in the day, Sunday, or, you know, even Monday, you can still play the, play along. And to do that, and to get started, I need you right now to either comment or text or somehow get me the words, I'm in. You need to do that right now for your entries to count. You should be able to see uh, my phone number on the screen, 570-449-3697. That's probably the best way. Just text that to me. Um, remember, even if you're watching this later Sunday or even Monday, you can still play. All right, so hopefully you got that into me. And then during the game, I want you to send me the answers for each slide the same way that you're just, you just sent me your I'm in message, right? So if you text it to me, text, text me your answers. So then every answer, you know, it has to be entered into comments or texted to me within the time that this game lasts. So what that means is you can't pause the video to look up answers, and you, you can't wait until the end of this message to get the answers. So don't try cheating because I'm going to know, and you'll be disqualified. What does the winner get? The winner gets a pizza with all their preferred toppings delivered to their house. That's if you live in McKeansburg, Naringal, Orangeburg, or Tamaqua area. You know, I'm not going to deliver a pizza to Philadelphia or Harrisburg or anywhere too far away. Yeah, Wade won the first pizza. Pastor Sonny won the second. And then again, Wade won the third. So, you know, get out there and play. You've got to play to win. If there's a tie, I'm going to draw the winner from the hat. All right, so here we go. Family Feud Bible Edition, ready for the first one. Name an animal mentioned in the Bible. There are seven possible answers. The way Family Feud works is if what you send me is on the board, you get the points for that answer on the board. So if your answer is the first one, and for example, there's 60 points on that, you get 60 points. If it's the last one, there's only three points, you get three points. All right, I'm going to give you another five seconds for that. Five, four, three, two, one. Name someone from the Bible whose name starts with the letter M. The letter M. <clears throat> There's quite a few of them. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, moving on. Name a famous miracle of Jesus. Name a famous miracle of Jesus. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, moving on to the next one. <clears throat> Tell me another name for Jesus. Tell me another name for Jesus. Five, four, three, two, one. <clears throat> Name something that you associate with Eve from the Bible. Name something that you associate with Eve from the Bible. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, moving on to the next one. Name a famous Old Testament Bible story. 
Name a famous Old Testament Bible story. Five, four, three, two, one. Going a little bit slower on that. Might take a little time for people to guess that. Guess one of those. All right, moving on to the last one, last one. Here we go. Name a book of the Bible that is not the name of a person, people group, or place. Name a book of the Bible that is not the name of a person, people group, or place. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, that's the game. So let me just say that I think I'm going to automatically disqualify Pastor Sonny and Pastor John <laughs> just because they might be able to get the highest points from all of these. So um, we're going to say no staff pastors allowed to compete today. If you already sent your answers in, that's great. We'll see how much you know. All right. So on to the lesson. Now, when I was a kid, I loved myths and legends, especially those that most people would label maybe ridiculous. For example, the Loch Ness Monster. I went through a period of obsession maybe with old Nessie. In middle school, I would watch TV shows and read books about Nessie. Why? Well, because I was, convinced, I was convinced that Nessie was real, you know, despite everyone else's unbelief, or at least most other people's unbelief. So what about you? Did you ever believe that Nessie's out there? Maybe you believe now that she's still out there, socially distancing like the rest of us. Let me share another example. Bigfoot. I used to watch documentaries about Bigfoot when I was younger. Now, most recently, there are, there's shows on TV now like Expedition Bigfoot, Finding Bigfoot and on the trail of Bigfoot. Now, nowadays, I'm pretty skeptical that Bigfoot could be real, but, you know, my wife Jane is still an avid Bigfoot believer and watches all those shows. If Bigfoot is real, he's got to hold the world, the world record, you know, the champion social distancing record for sure. But despite Jenna's and my unbelief of Bigfoot, she shares that with me, Jane still believes as as do so like millions of others around the country, right? So what about you? Do you think Bigfoot is real? Not mythical, but just really good at hide and seek? You know, despite the fact that I was so sure of their existence when I was younger, as I grew older, I started to doubt the existence of these creatures, as well as a lot of other things that I used to believe in. Over time, I've realized this gradual doubt doesn't just happen with myths, legends, and folklore. Sometimes it happens with relationships, life, and even our faith. Things that we were so certain of have recently become deep wells of doubt. This is the struggle we see in our youth message scripture for today. So I want you to follow along in your Bibles or the, view, the U version page, Mark 9, verses 14 to 24. Mark 9, verses 14 to 24. And in the, the NIV the heading for this says, Jesus heals a boy possessed by an impure spirit. <clears throat> so starting with verse 14. When they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about, he asked. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us now. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. 
Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Now, Jesus has a pretty nasty situation on his hands here. The man's son is possessed by a dangerous and destructive demon. But Jesus' disciples can't drive it out, and it seems the scribes don't want to drive it out. So how do you think this dad was feeling at the time? Disappointed? Afraid? The reality is that this, this dad was probably dealing with a combination of lots of troubling feelings. And because of this barrage of emotion, the man approaches Jesus to ask for his help. And in doing so, the boy's father reveals his own deep doubts. If you are paying attention to the passage, then you know that this man's son has been demon-possessed since he was a child, which means he probably tried everything under the sun to heal his son, but to no avail. Now here came this Jesus guy walking around the region, bringing the very thing his son needed, healing. Maybe he could do something about this. Maybe this is who he's been waiting for, but maybe not. Maybe Jesus would fall short as well, and he'd land back at square one again. That's the doubt. He wanted to believe. He really did, but he was just not sure if he could, which is exactly why he fell at Jesus' feet and cried, I do believe. Help my unbelief. At first glance, this seems like a contradiction, but I think this guy was voicing a tension that many Christians experience today, especially given the state that our world is in right now, and that's this. There's a gap between our knowledge of God and our trust in God. In other words, there are things that we know intellectually, but struggle to believe personally. It's the difference between head knowledge and heart transformation. Has anyone ever struggled with this before? Is anyone brave enough to admit that you're struggling with this now? For those of you struggling to understand this tension, let me give you some examples. You know that God has a good plan for your life. But maybe some recent rejection is stirring up doubts about that plan. You know God has forgiven you through Christ, but you still feel constant shame and condemnation. You know that God is in control, but one of your parents just lost their job because of COVID-19 and you're stuck asking why. You see the tension I'm talking about? If you've been here before or are here currently, let me encourage you. It's okay. Because at the end of the day, change is the process of belief, of belief moving from your head to your heart. This is where knowledge becomes trust. We all go through this, and probably more than a couple times, especially in our teenage years, but through this story, through this man's raw honesty, we can learn a refreshing truth, and that is this. We don't need to fake it or fix it for Jesus. This desperate dad didn't put on a mask and act like this trust was steady and unbreakable, and he didn't pull out his spiritual toolbox and you know, ask Jesus for a hand, like, Hold the screws while I fix this problem, Lord. Rather, he begged Jesus to save his son's life and to change his own heart. What honesty and boldness. No faking it and no trying to fix it on his own. How does Jesus respond to this level of boldness? Well, in Mark 9, verse 25, it says, When Jesus saw that a crowd was quickly gathering, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, get out of him and never enter him again. Jesus didn't rebuke the dad for his doubt. He rebuked the demon for his destruction, which means Jesus is okay, more than okay, with us dropping our doubts, troubles, and unbelief at his feet. He doesn't want us to fake our way through our faith or flounder to fix our problems alone. He wants us to trust him, to run to him and spill it all so that he can sort through it and change things for the better. And listen, I realize that's hard to do, but the promise in this story is that Jesus will hear us and answer us. So I want, to, I want us to practice this honesty together. Think about these questions. Think about them honestly. What are the doubts you have concerning your faith? And what are the things that you really need God's help with? So let's pray together, and then I have some additional instruction and a music video to end with. Father, sometimes we have doubts about our faith. We don't want to, but it's hard with all that's going on and that's going wrong in our lives today. Lord, we do believe. Help us with our unbelief. Amen.
Okay, so who wants to find out the answers to the game? Share my screen. And I gotta go back up to the first question. Here we go. Name an, answer, an animal mentioned in the Bible. Look at that. Sheep top, 24. Donkeys, 22. Snakes, 17. Camels, 14. Lions, 13. Doves, 5. And goats, 5. So if you got any one of those right, you get the points for that. All right, next one. Name someone from the Bible whose name starts with the letter M. Moses gets 33 points. If you had Mary, it's 22 points. Matthew, 18 points. Mark, 15 points. Martha, 10 points. And Methuselah, 2 points. All right. Name a famous miracle of Jesus. Water, 36. Feeding, 5,025. Raising Lazarus from the dead, 13. His resurrection, 12. Hmm, people think walking water is more impressive than, than a resurrection. Uh, water and wine, and the wine, 9. And calming the storm, 5. Tell me another name for Jesus. Christ, 50. Messiah, 23. Son of God, 10. King of kings and Lord of lords, 9. Redeemer 6, and Emmanuel 2. Name something that you associate with Eve from the Bible. Adam, 40. Fruit, 23. Snake, 26. Or 16, sorry. Sin, 11. And the Garden, 10. Name a famous Old Testament Bible story. Noah's Ark, 29. David and Goliath, 23. Jonah and the whale, 15. Parting the Red Sea, 12. Creation, 9. Joseph in the coat of many colors, 7. And Daniel in the lion's den, 5. And last one. Name a book in the Bible that is not the name of a person, place, group, people, or people group. Here we go. Genesis, 23. Psalms, 22. Revelation, 18. Exodus 10, Proverbs 10, Numbers 9, and Leviticus 8 points. So there you have it. Let's see how you all did. The, uh, again, remember, you can play this uh, Sunday or Monday, and I'll announce the winner Tuesday, or at least let the winner know, right? All right. So thank you for joining us, and... After we're done here, there are some family group discussion questions at the end of the YouVersion event page. Please take some time to discuss these with, with each other at home. If you're home alone, maybe phone, phone a friend or a loved one or just use it as a time for reflection and prayer. Now I want to leave you with one final thought and a song by David Dunn titled Starting Now. Listen as I read the bridge and the chorus. And he's talking first here about God. You're not scared away by honesty, and you can handle my uncertainty. So I will lay my question at your feet, because what you started in me, you're going to complete. So starting now, I'm going to trust when I have doubts. Don't have to have it figured out. Maybe that's what faith's about. So be honest with God. Tell him your doubts, and then trust that he's going to continue to work in you. If you haven't been doing that, why not start today, starting now? So please do watch and enjoy the video that's next on our playlist, my friends. Stay safe, wash your hands, and I love you all. God bless.